Once again, I'm delighted to spend a few minutes with you, and I thank you for letting me share some of my thoughts as we are given the opportunity of opening a new door to another beginning. Today we begin the season of Advent, and that means we're given a new perspective or a new focus on hope and the future. We make it our heartfelt prayer that the prediction given by the greatest prophet of the Old Testament will be fulfilled. The prophet, Isaiah, gave us a glimpse into the future. It's a beautiful future where people from all over the world will gather together and will worship the one and only God. There will be no more war between nations. A beautiful, bright future to hope for. Advent is the season of hope. We agree that this is a beautiful picture, but is it just wishful thinking and an impossible dream? We are Christians, and one of our highest priorities should be to hope and work for peace and harmony among people. But sometimes our hope fails because we lack imagination or lack courage. Some people keep telling us that our hope is doomed to fail or it's a waste of time because it's totally impossible or at least it's foolish. No more war? It's just a pipe dream. The only way that could change is if Jesus were to come once again. He could put an end to all our pain or stress or evil or tension of everyday life on earth, and peace would prevail. Now, wouldn't that be nice? Just let Jesus do all the work. It's very easy to have thoughts like this, especially when we look at what little we have managed to, to do with our futile efforts and how we suffered one disappointment after another and the discouragement that goes along with it. People tell us the way to a solution is don't aim so high and set goals that are more attainable and we should learn from the past so that we can be more realistic about what's possible. The result of this solution is that we will expect a lot less of ourselves and become spectators with very limited hopes. But what the season of Advent tells us is that we need to aim higher, and this will produce results that will be dramatically different. The results we anticipate are not smaller, but greater results, not limited hopes, but bigger ones. We hope for world peace, and it's not just the wishful thinking, but it's ex something we expect God to accomplish, and we want to help. In this letter to the Romans, St. Paul is very helpful in this. He gives us some attainable goals. He tells us to live honorably and to let Jesus help us in our efforts to love one another. The Bible is filled with promises made by God, 
and he has kept every one of them. St. Paul urges us to let the past be past and to let go of past wounds, past anxieties, past hurts, past fears and doubts so that we can live freely in the present time and hope for a better and safer future because God kept his promises in the past and we can trust God to keep the promises he makes today. Before Jesus took his leave of his disciples, he told them never to forget that no matter what happened, God is in charge. And Jesus warned his disciples, stay awake, stand ready, because the Son of Man is coming at a time and hour you do not expect. How we see the future determines how we live our present. So our Advent theme is to hope for the future. A realistic, possible, practical hope because our future is in God's hands. God bless you, your family and friends, and have a happy Advent.